All right, and we're live. It already says nine seconds, like as soon as we go. Yeah, this thing is weird, but we're live. We're here. Uh, this is Poland. Mm. Also, Poland. Do I call you Barca or Hannibal or Poland? Whatever you prefer. Okay. I so identify as all things. It does say Poland. All things Poland, Hannibal, and Barca. All right, there we go. Sorry, and I had to mute my YouTube. This is... This is weird. You got something in the mail, dude. I did. And we're not pretty supposed exciting. to bend it. Yeah. Well, did you bend, did you bend unlike, it? Uh, unlike your mailman, or mail lady, mine was a little bit more considerate, it would seem. So this seems to have arrived in pretty good fashion. One corner is a little dented in, but this is one of the Geminis, so those corners are actually faux corners. It's not the actual true corner itself where the actual product would be cool and this is exciting because as blue knows i'm not uh i'm not as prolific a purchaser as some mm -hmm. um part of that is due to the fact i haven't been at the comics that long so i'm still kind of developing what i like and i'm really only picking up the things that really catch my eye so this is one of my you know this is a bit of an event for me because i don't get things in the mail very often uh okay so uh, one reveal at a time. Oh, let's see, how do I do this? Do I, nope. um, one reveal at a time. I think I can s zoom in on you. There we are. Good, because yes. you covered your address. Good. Okay, so um, do you want to open it, or do you want to tell us who it's from? I'll, I'll let it be a surprise. I know who it's from. Right. I'm pretty excited about this, because I've gotten to know this guy personally. So I'm really excited to back him. He didn't catch his first campaign. So that may already narrow it down quite a bit because there's only been a few second campaigns. So let's take a look at this. Mm -hmm. This bad boy here. Ooh. Oh, this looks familiar. I wonder. I wonder who this could be. Hmm. So nothing else in there. Like I said, Gemini did its job. Good, Good. job, Gemini. Well done. So, so this is what we got right here. Original Black cover. and white by the one and only RT Bear. <laughs> nice. With some cards in the back, it looks like. Uh, I okay. was on the mailing list, so I got some cards back there. Pretty exciting. Can, can and we look at them? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll open it up, but... I was just going to say, there doesn't seem to be... I know a lot of people have been talking about bags and boards. There's no board on this. Uh, and the amount of blue, you could probably offer some insight on how common that is or not. Um, you know, I've done some comics on eBay, and typically they do come with a board. But mm -hmm. like I said, this seems to be unblemished. Now, I've got plenty of boards here and Mylar bags, which this will almost certainly go into. So I'm not too torn up about that. I mean, as long as it arrives in good condition... Mm -hmm. uh it's all good so but mm -hmm. like i said i don't know what you've seen because you've received a much larger volume of packages than i have yeah i've i've seen about 50 50 usually your ebay stuff people are going to include their boards because they already store it that way but with the new stuff like especially um um uh, comic skate on indiegogo i've seen 50 50 regarding the board and almost everybody has put in a bag because that protects the surface as the book slides around inside the gemini Ooh. shiny yeah very glossy very glossy cover here now blue did you get the first run of this uh yeah i did okay so this is the the second run and we it still has the signatures on there yeah pretty cool silver sharpie it's got the new art which one yeah the new art to bear signature right pretty rad it's exciting it's got the a thank you in the back for everyone, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Some gorgeous pages. In you case can from, sorry, yeah, you, go you, ahead. you could tell from here that Pamela packed this with love. She did. And in case anyone thought it was a, a bait and switch, you got plenty of gorgeous pages in here. So nice. art is the man. I'm pretty excited to take a look at this. And then we got some cards here. And I believe, I believe this one here on the right is the mailing list card. 
Uh -huh. And then this is the default car. That's what this is what ended up becoming that big poster that everyone right. was going crazy over. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they have the 25 year uh, anniversary logo on both of them and on the backs as well. Oh, oh, one of them's landscape. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Two different designs. Cool. Yeah. So they got they got a little bit different stuff going on. A little bit mm -hmm. of variety. I know so some you, people are crazy about cards. So for all you card fanatics out there, this is good stuff. And they're also I, glossy as well, like the cover. Nice. That um that's me, by the way. I am one of those card fanatics. <laughs> so. Yes. So if you oh, have a, a sleeve you have a folder with a bunch of sleeves in it you know get ready so. yeah uh i went to the uh the there's a local sports card shop and i tried to buy just a few um, of those sleeves and i'd been in there several times before but i think he he kind of remembered that he knew my face but didn't know didn't remember what kind of customer i was and he's like why don't you get a box there's a whole 900 in a baseball set you know so i was, I was just like yeah i'll just get the box so i don't have to keep coming back <laughs> there you go Buy in bulk, but Blue. Buy in bulk. Made him happy. So, um, you grabbed this book. Uh, what made you like? What made you want to get the book besides Art's, you know, vibrant personality? Well, honestly, you know, you joke. That was actually a huge part of it. Uh, okay. After I got to know Art a little bit better, after he came on to Michael's stream and getting to talk to him personally, mm -hmm. you know, I really became attached to him as a creator. And then I started to look more into his work. And I was thinking, man, it was such a shame I missed it the first time around. And when his first campaign was running, you know, I was still looking around at a lot of different stuff in Comicsgate. I hadn't backed a tremendous amount. So I was being really judicious in trying to make sure that I was backing people that I was familiar with because a huge part. And, you know, things getting out in time and in a timely fashion. And famously, even Ethan's first campaign was pretty late. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is a this is a big concern for a lot of folks. Uh, but after having seen the first campaign and really loving the work, I mean, this style that he does, he he's a master of many styles. But this style that he does, I really enjoyed. You know, it does take me back to those 90s comic books which make up the majority of my collection. You know, it's a pretty modest collection, but the majority of my collection are, you know, mid to late nineties comic books. And this, this style really did speak to me from that whimsical action adventure standpoint. And I just love art's work as well. I mean, you can't take anything away from the merit of it. I mean, just gorgeous, gorgeous work here. Yeah. So there's few people that do it better. I know what you mean. And he's learned, he's, I had to say he's learned from everybody, but that's true because he's had to trace over, I'm sorry, excuse me, not trace, ink over everybody. So, and that, that 90s superhero, but realistic style is, is it's just his forte. Um, exactly. And if you were to look at this compared to chrono mechanics, most people on the face, most lay people would probably not guess that that was the same artist on the two right. because the styles are divergent quite yeah, divergent and, and i'm sorry i misused the term forte what i meant was like he uh, if you're gonna go for that style he's it although some people might argue ethan van skyver but i trust the inkers and skyver um he inks his own which is great but i don't know between the two of them it's like they could make gorgeous books so yeah i I, anything art draws, I'm, I just, I want, and it's almost like I'm drawn into each of his different worlds though. I'm looking forward to Oot. What do we got here? You even Justice. have a blurb on the back as well. Justice can only be. Okay. Reed Blackett is a retired British M MI 10 agent with a checkered past who has, okay, I'm, this is hard to read on the screen. <laughs> yeah. But the, the point is, like, you don't see this very often where you have a little blurb on the back. Okay. Um, like and he's a got, novel. right, exactly. And he's got this cover art, I guess you could say back cover art, which is pretty cool. A little logo down here. I mean, it looks like a professional trade paperback. Yeah. Really well done. That's just, I've heard him talk about when he got his proofs back for uh, Chrono. God, I'm looking forward to Chrono because I've already read the old ones. I want to see the, 
the new ones. Uh, anyway, when he got his proofs back for Chrono and he was saying it was obvious what had happened to them, you know, he knew where the margins belonged and, and how things were misprinted and whatnot. Um, and so he, it's not just that he draws beautiful pictures in multiple styles. It's, it's that, um, sorry, I'm, I got distracted by the pictures. Uh, it's, it, oh, I see a little Laura Croft in her sometimes when, when yeah. she's in your hands. She just like transforms, <laughs> you know? Anyway. That's how it goes. But he's also got the uh, the balance for, you know, proper graphic design, like on the back of the book. So exactly. the, the man knows what he's doing. Yeah, and that's something a lot of people don't have an immediate grasp of, is all the other aspects that go into producing your own book. I mean, they could be amazing artists, but they don't have an understanding of everything that's truly involved in the entire production, which really makes these things a little, every one of these that's successful and really well done, a, a marvel in itself. You know, all the different people that have to come together to make something like this happen, you know, from mm -hmm. the printers to the flatteners to the people doing the artwork or in Michael Bancroft's case, you know, him doing everything mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and having other people on the back end doing the logistics. But it really is a marvel each time one of these comes out and you get something like this in your hands uh, that, you know, you had a part in making a reality as well with your backing, which is also a pretty neat feeling in itself. Yeah. Oh man. Well, well most, it's also neat because you said you get, you know, very few of these books, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's pretty special. Like none of these should be treated as run of the mill. Uh, right. Now that it's in your hands, you know, how does that make you feel? <laughs> I mean, as I just said, you know, it's pretty exciting, especially knowing that you had a, a part in making this a reality uh, because, you know, without the without the backers and the creators working in tandem, none of this would be coming together. We know, of course, the creators are the one actually producing these amazing works, but the backers and the people who have come here forlorn from the comic book industry or forlorn from just other entertainment like I was initially, mm -hmm. you know, us together, we've made a pretty neat climate here, a pretty neat environment where people can get projects and support projects that they don't have to feel guilty about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, okay, so do you, I don't want to ask the wrong prying question if you know what I mean. Uh, let me see if I can back this. How do, how do I go back from, I think I do this. There we go. And just so, to give everyone an idea. Oh, hey. The other thing I received most recently was Graveyard Shift 2. This was a, the so-called infamous, infamously dubbed Spike Campaign book where you had the Huerta cover, and I had the, the blood bag, so I got everything. It's got the two trading cards, this little tiny poster. That's not mm -hmm. a fold-out. That actually is the size. But it's, it's kind of a harder stock little thing. Then you have the reprint of the first book as well as a supplement in here. So this is a double, a you can see, there supplement and the volume one. And I ordered this in January. And I just got this a few weeks ago. So, yeah, this is this is the first campaign I've backed since, I guess, all the lockdowns and everything started that I've actually received. So that's pretty exciting. Cool. Um, I know John was delayed, no fault of his own, but right. I did get these. And that was the, like I said, first campaign I had um, backed for the year. And I haven't really backed many since this one outside of black and white. If that makes any sense. Ah, cool. Yeah. And that's a nice little um, set there you got in your hands. Just three books done. Right. Three books, two cards. Yeah. Nice and clean. John also oh. has a cool label on his packages with his uh, logo on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, right here, little that skull one. logo. By the way, we do have a request that you put some pants on. Um, I, I, I think Hex Allen is in Australia, so we, and you're in the states, so we have to remind him it's not that cold in the states right now. <laughs> so. No, it's not. It's actually pretty warm where I'm at. So you you back very few because you know I, I people back what they can and what and only what they want. Um, do you have anything else in the pipeline or do you not want to spoil anything for us? Well, uh, let me check some, there should be some other books on the way. Let me check some tracking numbers here and give you some updates. Maybe see what's going on. 
So, because, uh, you know, you get the, a lot of these guys now, which is a pretty cool thing. They will actually send you the tracking number ahead of time. That was not true in the earlier campaigns. Like, I've got one I know coming from Rob Arnold in Australia. I don't expect to see that one anytime soon. Oh, cool. Replicator. Replicator. Yep. Oh, well, as fortune would have it, it looks like one was delivered at my mailbox at one o'clock. So let me go see what that is. And I'll sure. be right back. Okay. This is pretty awesome. So That's I'll nice. get to share that with everyone too. You get, uh, hmm? uh, Here we are. I don't think Poland muted his microphone, but so he's going to his mailbox. Let's see. The Chaw spittoon on the desk. Uh, no, that's a regular metal cup. You can put a cap on it, and it's like a co it might be like a coffee mug. There's probably a handle on the other side. I just don't know what to say to fill the time. Uh, how you doing, Hex Allen? <laughs> um, and thanks for being here, Bandito. So I guess, do I have my camera plugged in? Of course not. This will be a moment. I don't want to steal any thunder from my buddy here, but since we're admiring art to bear, see if we can do this. Hey, there we are. So my part desk. Yes, there's a little bit more art to bear beauty going on here. As I said before, I, I I'm dyslexic, but I so I say things backwards, but, um, you know, this realistic superhero style is kind of Art to Bear's forte. What I meant was Art to Bear is one of the the guys you go to for this style, but he's got that other style that we're going to see in Chrono Mechanics. And I just, I I can't wait for that book either. But yeah, here's one of his, uh, there's the camera, there we go. There's one of his beauties. Um, yeah. Now this did come, Poland was asking about a bag and a board. This one did come with a board in it. I think, as far as I recall. You notice I always put my tape diagonally. It's because if you're going to open it, it comes along easier like that to peel up. So, And then when I did this, it freaked out Mike uh, Bancroft because, you know, the tape might touch the uh, cover. But anyway, so here is the uh, Vampirella cover that he did. Uh, this is one of the only Vampirella covers I, I got. I got another one as a gift, but that's a different issue. Um, this one I actually backed for, and I'm doing it the wrong way. There we go. So yeah, and it, it's it's really interesting once you get it out of the bag. All the background uh, textures that go in there. There were some little. I'm ones. back. Oh hey, welcome back. So I guess they're, they're not whatever I'm trying to show is not going to show up on camera. So I'm really glad you just came back. Exciting news. Yeah, there's actually two packages in the mail. Oh. And I'm, this is no joke. <laughs> I have not received, like I said, Graveyard Shift 2 is the last thing I've gotten in Comicsgate in the mail. Uh -huh. And that was about three weeks ago. Um, so this is pretty fortuitous. Of course, I got black and white. Uh, it came in the mail, what was it, Blue? Two days ago, I think I told you I got it. Yeah, yeah. We've been I waiting just wanted to, to share this. it with everyone. Uh -huh. um, so I've had that one sitting, but... The fact that these two came today was rather unexpected, especially at the same time, because they are not from the same people. So let's get to this. This is pretty cool. Cool. Turn, uh, can you turn your camera back on yet? Or are you Yeah, ready? I'm getting situated. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Hex Allen asked, did you just assume my nationality? I did. And uh, I'll just reassume it. I guess you're Antarctican. Okay. Hex Allen, welcome from Antarctica. Good to see you here. Um, so I'm going to hey. start with the one I was actually, ex that I actually just checked the track in number four. Uh -huh. And I have not had a chance to not dox myself, but I will try not to show the label, I guess. Okay. But you can see this is actually not, this is a U line. This is not, uh, I haven't seen this used before. I don't know if you have blue. I, I have. Seems, okay. I think so I what's your experience with this? Perfectly fine. I okay, think I got the same fine. packaging you did. Okay. So this one was one I actually had to reach out for a couple of times to the creator. 
Mm. He lost my message at one point and I reached out to him again. And initially he said, I don't have any more copies. And then he told me I do have copies. So yeah. you know, it was a lot of back and forth, but I'm hoping it will be worth it. And this is actually someone that I had asked Blue about because I didn't know much about them. I just, you know, kind of stumbled upon some of their stuff on Twitter. And, you know, after I got Blue's blessing, I went ahead and decided to back it because, you know, I don't very remember. knowledgeable, very don't knowledgeable guy in, here. Yeah. I don't remember what's in there, though. Well, nothing. We're about to find out. Oh, okay. And there is what that looks like on the inside. You know, for all of you packaging people, it looks like you have like a variable thickness you can do with these corrugations on the side. Mm -hmm. Not quite as customized, not as tailored as a Gemini, I would say, but you know, it looks like it did the job. I don't want to embarrass anyone live, but you know, we're about to find out. I okay. The the box itself functions as a board, and the uh, bubble wrap functions like a like a, ba a bag, so it still should not be scuffed up and stuff. There it is. Nice. So this was one. This is the one I was talking about where I just saw Brian doing some of his stuff on Twitter in terms of animation. Mm -hmm. uh, he was doing a little sample, I think, with this main character here. I think she's supposed to be the pilot type character. Right. And I said, oh, that looks cool. Is this a Comiscape book? And, you know, it seems to be adjacent at least. Definitely independent creator. So I just went out and went and backed this. And I have to say, I, I really like the, the form factor here. Yet again, you have an awesome looking back cover. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of these. Got barcodes on there. Oh, so he has an ISBN then. Yeah. Cool. And the, the pages feel good. Definitely does not feel like any corners were cut on those. Like I said, I got this. This is this is for the uh, first printing. I just happened to reach out to him and get it separately. So I, I didn't get any of the extra bits because I think the campaign, there were some extra bits that came with this originally. Uh, so, and I think, uh, yeah, I think mine came with the sh one of those cutout sheets to make a, um, a, a paper doll. Right. And yeah. again, this is a uh, Brian Shearer. Shearer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I'll make I sure I remember. get the man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of remember you asking about that. Now it's just, is he comics gate and is he a jerk? And the, and it's like yes and no. So, <laughs> or no, maybe I'm not sure. And no, I don't think he's. A well, jerk. he was very polite to me in DMs. I will say that. And uh, I, I was like I, I said, he lost track of me. He lost okay. track of me in our conversation at one point. I had to reach back out to him a couple of times. Yeah. To get this, we were a little bit back and forth, but I think that's more just managing multiple accounts and not being a kid of the internet more so than being inconsiderate. So Brian was very kind. And once I sent him the PayPal, I got a tracking number within a week. And now here we are, you know, I think it's been about a month, a little under, a little shy of a month. And now I have the book in hand. So no complaints there because he's fulfilling the original campaign right now as well. If Twitter is any indication. I hope so. And uh, I've, I, ca I caught him on a few streams. He was very uh, cigar smoking, I think, and very mellow. Uh, just, you know, a, a nice chill dude, if you know what I mean. Yep. So for all of you Transformer fans out there, this seems to be what he's going for. And he draws a lot of robots. A lot of robots. <laughs> a lot of robots. Cool. So, so yeah. pretty excited. This is a, this was me going out on a limb a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, because like I said, usually there's a bunch of boxes you have to check before I, I'm really going to put money down on one of your campaigns, you know, whoever it may be. And this is one of those. I'm, I just thought, man, it just looks really cool. Let me back it and see what's going on with it. And just flipping through here right now, I'm sure you can see it even if it's upside down. Uh, just flipping through here right now, you can see that there's some pretty neat set pieces going on. Like I said, any fan of Transformers, Robotech, it has that feeling of it for me too a little bit. Mm -hmm. some of that late 80s early 90s type of mecha robot action here yeah just a hair cartoony and it's perfect yes i like that yep. planet that we just went by yeah pretty cool 
So that's Brian. Brian Shearer. And you have bags, not just boards, right? Uh, you mean just and for myself? Yeah. Yeah, I've got plenty. Cool. Yeah, because I, you know, you get a lot of stuff from eBay, and it comes in the nastiest <laughs> bag and boards. I mean, they, I mean, some of it looks like it was stored in um, a garbage bin mm-hmm. where they also put all their leaves mm-hmm. for some reason. Yeah. All their clippings from the yard. And I've pulled comics out of bags that just looked so gross. Thankfully, with a lot of these books I was buying, it seemed like they just had just placed them in those just for mailing. So they hadn't been sitting in those. Um, What's interesting is that there was one comic book I got that had the original sticker from the comic shop right here in the corner on the bag, like a little orange price sticker. And that orange price sticker had actually imprinted itself very barely into the cover of the book like if you looked at it you know almost parallel you could see you could see it it had left a little indentation and that just goes to show you how tightly packed that thing was at one point yeah it's quite remarkable that can also make the spines do funny things when they're when they're packed so tight oh yeah um, i've actually seen some guys recommend that you if you're storing books long term that you store them alternating yeah um, i get boards that you can put a bet put on either side that you put the book on either side. So a normal board, the so-called shiny side is actually a, a pH buffering coating so that it, it deals with the acid better. And your rough side is the, uh, uh, is just plain, is basically plain paper. The, I get other boards that are archival and they're not smooth on either side, but they're infused with the pH buffer, the, the acid base, uh, buffering cool box. And, uh, so I can, so I can put two, I can put a, bo- a book on either side in one bag and both uh, the board is basically double sided. And that's how I do my spine alterations is, is that way. So. Yeah. I, I use the uh, archival boards. So there isn't a sh- shiny side. I have had some with a shiny side. These archival ones, the whole thing can be used on either side. Mm-hmm. They're made by Gerber Gerber. Thank you. Yeah, those are mine. Gerber. Those are the Mylar ones I have as well. Okay. Uh, so cool. I use the half, the half ones. Or mm-hmm. no, I actually use the full thickness boards. And I use the Mylar bags for standard size. So that mm-hmm. seems to fit all my stuff pretty well. I know cool. a lot of people like Silver Age, but the standard works well for all my stuff. Yeah, because I'm doing two books to one bag and I'm using both sides of the, of the double-sided board, um, I end up with, it's like standard modern, but it's the thick book bag is what I use. Now, there is one that's smaller than the standard. Mm-hmm. I think that it's, I think they do refer to it as contemporary or modern. Yeah. Where literally for my 90s books, they're on, I mean, it's just all cover. Like when you look at it, if you were to put it in there, it's yeah. so tight that all you see is the cover itself. So Some of those I'm not comfortable with how tight they are. And you can tell if you look down at the top edge of the page, if it's waving, um, like you can get the book in there, but not a board or vice versa. You know, you can put a board in, but then it's full. There's no room for a book. And so I had to keep away from those. But these thick book ones, they're made by BCW. I think that's who it is. And it's just like, th- you know, two extra millimeters um, in width. Yeah, I think the full backs that I have from Gerber are four, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Blue, let me know if I'm doxing myself by accident, okay? No, I think we're past the danger zone because you're kind of facing it towards yourself. You're the, uh, the, the anti-doxing expert, so I trust you. All right, so this... There. Now I'm going was, to okay. This was one unexpected. And I think people who already recognize the stickers probably already know who this is from or what this is. But you get a little card that says, thank you for ordering. <laughs> and this is from Iconic Press or Iconic Comics. So well, that narrows the list down considerably as to what book this could be. I was pretty excited about this. This is from one of the original so-called 
as they say, OG comic skate people, mm -hmm. Doug Ernst. Nice. And there are so there's a few names that people probably recognize on there. Timothy Lim, you know, transcripts, mm -hmm. uh, Brett R. Smith as well. So this is soul finder demons match by the one and only Doug Ernst who recently appeared on war campaign show a few weeks ago. And, you know, it raised some awareness for me to what Doug was doing right now. Cause I haven't really seen much of him. Right. And I realized that I could still get a copy of this book. And after hearing some about it, I thought, you know, I think I would really enjoy that. So let me go ahead and put in the order and see what it's all about. So he actually has, it looks like his own, and maybe you know more about this blue. It looks like they actually have their own fulfillment service here or some type of little press that they're doing. Hmm. I don't actually, I don't know about that. I haven't kept a much truck of uh, track of anything. Yeah. So I actually got this through the iconic comics website. Okay. Uh, so that you can see their websites right there. Iconic comics. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they still are going to be doing uh, fundraisers or Indiegogos and Kickstarters and whatever. But I think when it comes to it's already been printed and fulfilled, you can go and get it after the fact at Iconic Comics. Now, of course, if, like with a lot of these campaigns, there would probably be a lot of perks to backing it initially. But you can still get a copy of Doug's book. And from my understanding, it's really good. Everything I've heard about it in terms of the writing and the art has been nothing but stellar. And I've had a chance to speak to Doug recently. Super nice guy. He actually, before I open this, let me show you guys. That sounded like Mylar. Uh, it doesn't feel like Mylar. Okay, all right. It doesn't feel like it. Just it's the tape. Not, it's not stiff enough. So Doug also sent me this. And this oh. came earlier in the week. So Doug does this thing every week, it seems like, called Doug Prize. And if you're someone who's backed one of his comic books, you can comment on one of his Doug Prize posts on Twitter, and he can send you whatever book that he's promoting. So he sent someone right before me, The Patriot's History of the United States, and then he put this one up. And I said, Doug, I just bought your book, but it hasn't arrived yet. He said, no problem. Send me the invoice. And so then I got this in the mail from him. Didn't even ask me to pay for shipping. Super nice guy. So he just sent me this awesome collection of C.S. Lewis. And then in the same week, at the end of the week, so I got that at the beginning of the week, and at the end of the week, I get his actual comic. So that's really exciting. So let's take a look. A this does beat. have a, a bag and board. So I think this is probably, and you guys saw the box it came in. Mm -hmm. so that thing is not going to get hurt whatsoever. Definitely the best and most robust packaging out of everything I've handled today. So there's the, the book itself. Yeah. And we have the back side here. It's funny. There are three figures on each, the front and the back. You know, I wonder if that's deliberate. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of the interiors real fast. Don't want to give away the whole thing. Definitely, I can say that my first impression just flipping through the interiors is that this is more high contrast and cartoony of a style than I thought it would be based on the cover, which right. is not an indictment on the book by any means. No, no. But compared to the cover and the tone from what I understand of the book, um, that that's surprising to me. So we'll see how that goes can, as you read through it. I don't yeah, think that's necessarily a conflict. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can you open to the first page also? Sure. The explosion one? Yeah, so even that is far less cartoony than the rest of the book. Right. So there's a little, we'll just call it a bit, a bit of a contrast. That's more of a, he's, a, he's opening the book with a pinup piece. Nothing wrong with that. It's just a choice. So. Exactly. Cause then the next page, you start looking at stuff like this. Now there's a lot more, there are, there are a lot more uh, panels per page. It seems on some of those pages you flip through than uh, the bunny books that, that Lim drew. Yeah. I have no experience with those. So. Well, those, those are also written by Pellegrini, I think. And, okay. Uh, and this is written by Ernst. So the, right. I guess the writer usually has a lot of say in how many panels there are. Yeah, depending on how wordy they are, right? The, right, Blue? Yeah. 
And and uh, I'm not seeing a bunny in this. So no. Oh, well, there's a lot of panels on this page yeah. here. A lot of division, a lot of partition going on. But you can you can still flow through and know how to read it. Right. Exactly. So. Now I see one panel arrangement that I tend not to like, but it, everybody uses it. It's just it catches me on the our right side where the priest's head is. Um, yeah, I'm not pointing it away. Anyway, so yeah, on our right side where the priest's head is, just solo, and then the two figures in the square below it. I always misread those by going left to right first and skipping the one below it. So, but that's a me thing. That's really not a. Uh, um, an artist. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's, that's totally a me thing. Yeah, when I first started reading comics a few years ago, because as I said, I think at the beginning of the stream, I'm only really two years into this hobby. I, I ran to that a few times. I'm like, wait, where do they want me to go next? Yeah. And, I'm not and, sure if that was a failure of the the comic or me. No, every comic does that. It's so I, I think it's me. And what's funny is when it's manga and it goes the other direction, I don't do that mistake. I go down first and then across when it's oh, really, yeah. When it's, you're supposed to, when it's stacked like that next to a bigger panel. So anyway, there we are. I wonder. And it also has a neat uh, effect here on the actual title. Yeah. A little bit of foil going on. Oh, cool. Yeah. A little bit of foil there. And it seemed bigger in the uh, bag, but I think that may have just been the board. Yeah. That board was way wider than the book. Cause if I go and grab, Brian's book again. You can see they're identical in size. Yeah. So I think it was just the uh, the board behind it amplifying it. What's What's interesting about these two, right, as opposed to black and white, is that these are not necessarily, as we kind of discussed, what people would think nowadays is comicscape books, right? Um, right. People are going to think about black and white. They're going to think about Cyberfog. They're going to think about uh, Graveyard Shift, which I just showed a few minutes ago. Like Brian, I think, hangs out with Doug to Naple quite a bit. So yeah. definitely not what you would think about as Comicscape, but as I've said for a while, everyone from the outside looking in is going to consider all this Comicscape. Right. It's like, oh, those are those indie books they're doing campaigns for on Indiegogo. Definitely at least comics gate related or adjacent as we've seen recently with jay lee it's not enough just to say oh i just did a, a contract with someone and did some work for them no now you are you have to actively denounce comics gate to not be considered a part of it and even then they're still going to consider you a part of it just look at mike miller so yeah. i think that's this interesting that these two books came at the same time because i think they would both be considered by a lot of people in the modern comic skate audience of 2020, maybe not what you would expect from quote comic skate titles. This yeah. is not what would come to people's minds, but for me, you know, if they're great books and the guys behind them just want to make great entertainment, I'm not opposed. And if you have great customer service, you know, that's the number one thing for me. So like I said, Brian got back to me. Doug is very receptive Super nice guy sent me that C.S. Lewis book. So these are good guys. And I think they deserve people's support. Yeah, I've noticed in, in Comicsgate, there are a lot of people I like who are also fans of people that I personally dislike. And, and there are very, very few people I personally dislike. Um, I think I can count them on... on I, well, I don't count them. So <laughs> anyway, I don't spend that much time on it. Um, but I have nothing against people, you know, creators who hang out with people I don't like. It's, it's their deal. Um, so there's who is and isn't comics gate as you get a, away from the bit, the more well-known names. I, th I really do not care what the people in the center think who is and isn't comics gate out, out at the edges. I care more about, do I, do I like your book? And if I like your book, good. Are you a jerk? No, then we're good. If I like your book and you're a jerk, I might be willing to pass it up, you know? Right. Yeah, I'm. They, like it just depends on a case by case basis, which is why I was saying with, you know, when I was talking about black and white earlier. Yeah. Once I got to know Art, I knew I could back anything he puts out, guilt free. Which is not to say I, I I'm not going to think critically about it, but at least when it comes to that aspect of knowing the man's character, you know, once 
once I got that level of familiarity, I was like, okay, that's one of those things I'm not going to have to worry about with him, uh, which is not to say everything, you know, anyone puts out is going to be made of gold every time. No. Um, you know, if you get something, even if you really like someone and it's not up to par, I think if you really care about that creator, you should let them know that feedback. Yeah, true. So well, this is pretty exciting because, like I said, these are both kind of from the periphery, I guess we could call it, blue, of Comicscape. Yeah, uh, I don't mind I, calling it that. I mean, they're yeah. not, I wouldn't call um, Doug Ernst because there are two Dougs. I wouldn't call Doug Ernst lesser known. Um, Brian Shearer, his name popped up and then fewer people talked about it. Um, but they're still around and their comic skate fans are fans of these guys as well. Right. And Doug is what a lot of people now refer to as OG CG. Mm -hmm. And I think some people say that in a little bit of a derogatory way. Unfairly. Oh. See, I thought that would include Ethan and uh, Zach as well. To be no. So CG. when people say, at least now when people say OG CG, they're talking about people who just made YouTube videos that critique the comic book industry early on, and they weren't actually producing books, oh. uh, which is now, I mean, look, Doug's book is in my hands, but he was one of those that was really early on. Um, that's been on YouTube. I think talking about comic books since Oh nine or something somewhere in that realm. I've been doing it for a while. Um, but he's a big culture guy. So he's always talking about things in the culture and that's comic books. Yeah. So I, these guys, I, you know, I, they had their. Oh, sorry. No, I, I was going to say. Uh, Doug streams a whole bunch, but, um, you know, things, you know, your things change and I don't catch the streams as much anymore, if ever. Yeah. I had, when he went on war campaign, that was actually the first time I had seen him in a long time on anything. Hmm. So that was pretty cool to get to hear from him again and see where he's at and what his perspective was. Uh, because honestly, when the Timothy Lim kind of fracturing happened with Ethan mm -hmm. a few years ago, uh, where Ethan said, you know, doing overtly political books isn't comic skate and Timothy Lim, you know, wanted to do the president thump books and all those sorts of things. And yeah. there was a little bit of a break there and you had a little transcript stream. And I, I think we could all just move on from that because I ultimately I believe we're all on the same side yeah uh, think, if they want to make political books that are going to appeal to a certain niche audience let them do it yeah um, this is not one of those to clarify Doug's I think this is a story that could be enjoyed by anyone but I think that's where the initial fissure happened and we've all kind of just stayed in our own separate corners ever since then so yeah my thing about the limb split um, taught me a lesson early on with uh, things you you should learn with. Well, I learned it with people in, in person, you know, in real life. But one of the things I noticed with the limb split was there was more nuance that Ethan had in mind with what he said. And even if there weren't, even if it were, you know, blunt, I wouldn't need to take it so hard as, as limb took it. Um, and of course, it's easier for him to take it a little bit harder because it's his project. It's his baby. And so I can understand where he'd be coming from that. He was offended by that or if offended is the right word. Uh, so what you've said many times about a couple people in comics gate is that when they're tweeting at each other, they need to read each other more charitably. And that's, that's just a good thumbnail to put out there of, of how can of, am I being charitable and how I read this? Yeah. So um, I, I see people getting so uptight with each other instead of being charitable. And I, uh, I don't want to take things as hard as perhaps Lim did, even if, he, if personally he had good reason to just because, you know, it's your baby kind of thing. That would be the good reason to is what I mean. So uh, I, I appreciate what you've said in the past Poland about reading each other more charitably. Yeah. I think it would go a long way in a lot of these interactions that people have. Yeah. Absolutely. And it seems like every time there's a disagreement, people go from giving people the benefit of the doubt to zero benefit of the doubt. And actually they go in the opposite direction. They just assume that everyone intends to do the worst and do damage to each other, which is not true. Mm -hmm. Like for some, I mean, if anyone out there, I'm not saying this is the case, but if anyone out there thinks Doug and Tim 
and Brett are trying to undermine anything that Ethan, John, and Cecil are doing, just as an example, that's ridiculous. And the same and vice versa. If anyone thinks that Ethan, John, and Cecil are trying to undermine anything that these guys are doing, that's mm-hmm. also absurd. Uh, but this is the way that things I see. This is how people frame it on Twitter and in YouTube comment sections. Yeah. And of the, then that's not the case. And, and just be, let's say that, okay, you say it's absurd. Well, let's say I've seen evidence of um, smiling bandito um, putting out a book and uh, we'll, I'll just use people in the chat because there are names here and Hex Allen comics is trying to destroy him. And I see the evidence of that. That doesn't mean I need, you know, and smiling Medito can take care of himself. Uh, you know, Hex Allen doesn't know that he has nukes. So um, that doesn't mean I have to go on crusades, you know, suddenly teaming up for people for their argument that I'm not a part of. Yeah, there's a lot of brigading that happens. Yeah. You know, just let them work it out is kind of a good thing, too. So, all right. Well, Blue, did you have any, have you uh, gotten any of these books? Any or all? Um, uh, yeah, all of them. I have all three of those. Okay, awesome. So I should reading, have known this much. My reading, but when you were out out at your um out at your post box, I I uh, turned on my camera just to fill the time, and I was showing a different book that I had gotten from Art to Bear. Uh, but I didn't want to be stealing your thunder, if you know what I mean. So no, oh, I'm not stealing that. anything. No, this the is, uh, oh, that yeah. was a Vampirella one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I and saw it when I came back in. I was I was already reading the Christopher Priest Vampirella, and unlike other Vampirella books that have gotten recovered, um, this one was from the Christopher Priest run, and it was cool. Art to Bear. So I was like, okay, that that's that's a good intersection. Yeah, and that was Bear. that was one that was disappointing for me. Is when I saw a lot of those covers weren't even from the Christopher Priest run. Yeah, I I just you know he was the only reason I was even paying attention to Vampirella again. Because he seemed like a guy that wanted to go out there and tell a story that the other game was unique and actually about femininity as opposed to whatever the modern conception of feminism is. So I really respected him for not for resisting the cancel culture that happened uh, around him. You know what was that? I guess a year ago when they launched it. So that was pretty neat. So I have the Frank Cho I think cover of that. I didn't get any of the Indiegogo ones, but. Um, I did go out and buy that specifically to support Christopher Priest yeah. and Dynamite at the time for putting that book out. What's really funny is people had said they liked Priest. I think that was Micah Curtis who said he really liked Christopher Priest. And I took his recommendation to heart uh, and I started reading. Um, well, first it was uh, a Justice League run that I, I picked up a couple trade paperbacks. And that was after the Rebirth era, if that helps anybody listening to this. So he did two trade paperbacks worth of worth of issues, and then he moved over to Deathstroke, and that uh, that was just incredible reading Deathstroke with from Christopher Priest. I loved it, and it was actually hard to read at first because it wasn't dumbed down. Um, so I was like, "Whoa, I need to shift shift gears in my brain." And then I just I actually went back an issue and just started over. <laughs> and it was like, "Okay, this is an actual adult book that you can follow." Um, I wouldn't call it kid accessible because there's a lot of violence and death in it, but it, it, it was, it was awesome. I'm just very happy to have found Christopher priest, uh, before Micah recommended him, I had already, you know, noticed his name and been told you should try him out. And then when I heard Micah recommend him, I was like, okay, that's just, you know, one more notch on the belt before I go get Christopher priest. And I had no idea, nor did I care about his ethnicity and and then I saw the article where they were trying to destroy him, and it's like, well, you know, why? He he turns down jobs that he's getting that he's being offered because of racism. You know, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. It, it just his writing is so good. Why why do they have to resort to that kind of stupid surface level garbage of offering him bad jobs? You know, I, I don't. I don't like that. And um, it's weird to call it a bad job, but I think you know what I mean by the off, by the offer, even if whatever book he got, I think he'd do really well on. So um, that's when I saw he was on Vampirella. I said, well, all right, I'm going to try Vampirella now. And that was me. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, mine was not as 
involved as yours, but after I had heard some things about Christopher Priest and I saw him give some statements, I said, I'm going to go support this man. So mm -hmm. yeah. pretty cool guy. My little, my little light that tells me that my battery was low is now fading, which I think might, means the battery I use to amplify my microphone is dying. So you got to tell me if I, if I fade out completely. <laughs> I will. So, well, congratulations on your books in the mail. Um, I don't know where. Yeah, like I said, this is pretty fortuitous. Yeah. Oops. What am I doing here? Let's go back to. There we are. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, nice. You got a full weekend ahead of you. Yeah. F few weekends if uh, I stay as busy as I have been with everything else. But yeah, this is pretty exciting because, like I said, I don't get a lot in the mail. Um, mm -hmm. So the graveyard shift kind of broke the dam so to speak, because I hadn't received anything in months and months. And that was a lot due to me not backing a tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. um, but now everything seems to have come at once. So that's pretty exciting. Got a new stack of books to look at and admire. And I want to thank all the creators personally, because I've spoken to actually all three of these people um, before mm -hmm. uh, in a, 1v1 situation, which is pretty cool. You can't say that about uh, definitely most books you pick up off the shelf, which is another really neat thing about this crowdfunding environment we find ourselves in. So I want to thank all these guys, Brian, Doug, and Art, of course, uh, for your awesome customer service and getting these books to me safe and sound. And I look forward to reading them and supporting your other projects. Cool. All right, Poland. Thanks for sharing this with us today. I, I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll check everybody next time. Bye-bye.